Thank you, Balash. Uh, I understand uh, my turn is now to entertain you with some figures, uh, what is usually the task of a budget commissioner. So my understanding is I'm a budget engineer, not a treasurer, and therefore... Was this already a first reaction or...? <laughs> no, anyway. Um, can I continue? Okay. So I, I would suggest to, to show you a little bit how this engine uh, works in order to recover and to help and to, to produce uh, more resilience in Europe. So maybe uh, only to recall a little bit the structure and what we have done so far and what will be uh, uh, the near future and the next, uh, so to say, MFF. Um, again, what we have done already, this famous 440 billion, I think you are very familiar with it. What it has uh, managed and what it's providing is uh, liquidity. You know, the most urgent and most pressing uh, issue for the moment is to provide liquidity to the market, to the companies, uh, in order to survive. What is now, so to say, the challenge, and in that respect, uh, we are lucky that uh, the current MFF is expiring by the end of the year, and then we start with a new one. We use this opportunity. We have, so to say, revamped on the basis of the uh, proposal of uh, Charles Michel, the, the core MFF, and on top uh, we have, uh, as a temporary reinforcement, uh, uh, these uh, 700 billions, which have already been announced today uh, by the President. I think now it's important to understand how these 750 billions are used, uh, it's, so to say, for the next generation, it's now our responsibility to make Europe fit for the future, to help Europe to come out from this crisis stronger uh, and to be more competitive on a global scale. So this 750 billion will definitely boost the financial firepower of the European budget. The funds raised through the borrowing on the markets uh, will be channeled through the European Union programs to underpin the immediate and fast-acting measures needed to protect people and get the economy back on its feet. A reinforced multi-annual financial framework for 2021 till 2027 amounts uh, to around 1,100 billion. By the way, for connoisseurs of uh, figures, I'm talking about 200, uh, 2018 prices, so to be very precise. But um, all this will help uh, to support uh, the single market, step up uh, corporations uh, um, in the area of uh, health and crisis management, equip the union with a long-term budget to drive the green and digital uh, uh, transition and build a fairer and more resilient economy. Um, I think uh, you are also already quite familiar with this chart. It shows simply where the different programs will kick in. Uh, the first one on the left is supporting member states to recover. Here we have uh, clearly the recovery and resilience facility. Uh, uh, we have REACT EU, which is, so to say, on top of the traditional cohesion program. We have a reinforced rural development program, and we have a reinforced just transition mechanism. To give you some figures, uh, the recovery and resilience facility will amount to 560 million euro. Uh, this will, of course, foster investments and reforms essential to a lasting recovery and improving, in particular, the resilience of the different national economies. Um, cohesion policy will play an essential role and uh, in supporting a balanced recovery uh, through a new 55 billion uh, REACT EU initiative, uh, uh, we will help. Uh, I will come to the issue of uh, bridging uh, the new um, uh, um, uh, to bridge the time till the new MFF kicks in, uh, we need um, a kind of solution 
which after the liquidity crunch uh, addresses in particular the solvency crunch, but also um, already to prepare, so to say, regions and member states uh, uh, to address the recovery and resilience uh, measures. So therefore, uh, our idea is to have a bridge, uh, if you like, facility, which already has to be adopted uh, this year as an, uh, to put it, uh, simple increase of the current MFF uh, by 11.5 billion, where, for instance, 5 billion should be used already for the Solvency Fund, another 5 billion to front load React EU, um, and uh, um, 1.5 billion in order to uh, increase uh, the, the capital of the European Investment Fund, which we need as partner for the implementation of the Solvency Fund, and um, uh, finally 1 billion for uh, um, the support, if I may say so, of our friends in the Western Balkans with special financial uh, means and products. Uh, only to give you a flavor about the impact of this 5 billion for the creation of the Solvency Fund. Here we are talking of a provisioning for guarantees, and these guarantees should finally uh, guarantee private investors who are ready uh, to go into the capital of, in principle, uh, healthy companies which simply face a Solvency crunch. And therefore, I think uh, we can uh, calculate with a quite favorable leverage. So, finally, this 5 billion will, at the end, trigger around 50 billions of uh, concrete capital um, investments. And I think this, for the last quarter of this year, is already a big step forward. Um, coming back to this uh, chart, um, uh, this, the, the, the middle, the middle uh, part is uh, indicating uh, uh, the kickstarting of the economy. Here you have again the solvency support instrument, which of course is uh, continued uh, in, the, in the beginning of uh, the next period. And altogether, we will have a solvency instrument of around 31 billion uh, euro. And I think this is something which really helps to counterbalance some uh, developments we are just facing in Europe. Uh, it's also about a strategic investment uh, facility and, in general, a strengthening of the investor EU uh, program, which uh, means that uh, uh, we can further uh, provide for the new strategic investment facility 15 billion euro. This is about strategic autonomy. This is the fifth window in the invest EU, let's say family. family and the strengthened invest EU program will get additional, uh, or will be reinforced by 15.3 billion euro. Um, and um, uh, it's also important uh, to highlight uh, that the Just Transition Fund should be further reinforced altogether uh, by uh, 30 billion euros. And uh, also the European Agricultural a fund for rural development, the famous second pillar, should get additional 50 billion euro, all of them aiming uh, to support member states, regions, and helping them uh, to, to kickstart as, as soon as possible. And uh, finally, we have the third pillar, uh, where you can see the lessons we have to learn from the crisis. That's why the new EU for Health program gets a very strong financial support. I think currently the budget is around uh, 0 0.46 uh, uh, million uh, billion euro, and now it should get altogether 9.4 billion euro. Uh, the same applies, not in the same magnitude, but also to strengthen the civil protection mechanism by 2 billion euro. Uh, also, Horizon Europe of course, in the center of all our research and innovation activities should be strengthened by 13.5 billion. So altogether, the horizon budget would be nine, almost 95 billion euro. And in that respect, 
It's the biggest research program in the world, and uh, I think another challenge for us will be uh, to care that uh, these um, results uh, based on our financing can be really translated into business opportunities here in Europe. And finally, it is very important, of course, uh, also to support our global partners with the three well-known uh, main targets, the Western Balkans, our neighborhood, and Africa. And there, all together, the budget should be 118. Here, you can see it once again, uh, uh, if you take our different headings, um, the, the, um, uh, the number below the dotted line indicates the, 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 the figure which we take from the um, next generation pot and channel it into the uh, um, uh, different parts of our budget. So you have seen for the recovery and resilience facility and REACT EU all together, it's 610 uh, billion, but we will raise 750. The difference of 140 is clearly um, uh, distributed to the different headings. Um, uh, of course, cohesion and values, there you have these uh, uh, two um, 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 programs I have just mentioned, uh, the resilience and uh, recovery facility and REACT EU, amounting to 610 in single market and innovation and digital. Altogether, the budget will be 210.5. Out of them, almost 70 are uh, a kind of reinforcement from um, the um, uh, next generation um, um, uh, pot. The same applies natural resources and environment. Here, the two areas I have mentioned, just transition fund and pillar two, rural development uh, uh, in, in agriculture. Um, the heading four, there is no reinforcement from the, um, from the next generation uh, uh, pot, but NB means not uh, uh, something not mentioned, but it means uh, the nego box of Charles Michel. The nego box of Charles Michel uh, was almost uh, 22 billion euro, and our proposal is now to increase uh, the heading four for migration and border management to 31 billion euro. Resilience, security, and defense uh, should have uh, a little bit more than 29 billion, uh, uh, reinforced by uh, 9.7 from the EU next generation. And neighborhood and the world, I have already referred to it, will get 180. Of course, there's also administration. We will face uh, new challenges, new tasks, and that's why we propose to increase very modest uh, from 73.1 to 74.6. Uh, this only to give you an idea, and here you can see what I have already explained, the bridging on the basis of the current MFF by um, using um, uh, available opportunities so that finally we can already provide 11.5 billion this year, uh, how it has to be uh, distributed to the different uh, channels I have already uh, mentioned. Uh, so to say, uh, important, and I understand there is a huge interest in it. Of course, also the president in the previous press conference was asked how to repay the money we are borrowing at the market, at least the 500 billions which are used as grants, uh, and may I say part of it, uh, less than 100 million, will be actually guarantees. But nevertheless, we are talking of, uh, therefore, uh, more than 400 uh, um, uh, billion euros, and this has to be repaid. Um, and uh, we suggest uh, to use new own resources in order to repay in the future uh, the money we are borrowing, and therefore we are not asking member states now and in the future for additional contributions. But finally, it's a decision being taken by the member states themselves. So actually they have the choice to give us the necessary firepower. In case they give us the necessary firepower, there are two options. The one is 
to use new own resources or to have higher contributions. Uh, like the President, I am very much in favor of the option to have new own resources for different reasons. Uh, but first, I would like to um, underline a little bit uh, the different ideas with concrete figures of potential revenues. You see the extension of the emission trading system um, could uh, yield uh, around 10 billion per year. A carbon board adjustment mechanism, depending on the structure and the setting, uh, 5 to 14 billion per year. And own resource based on operations of large enterprises, of course, again, depending on the design, could generate around uh, 10 billion annually. And uh, the famous digital tax, uh, around 70 uh, 50 mil, uh, um, uh, for companies with more than 70, 50 million uh, revenue per year could generate around 1.3 billion per year. Uh, the famous plastic contribution we have not listed here because it's already in our original proposal. Also, depending on the size and the setting, could yield between uh, 3, 4, and 9 uh, billion euro. You see, if you count all together, we can easily serve within 30 years um, uh, these um, loans uh, we have uh, borrowed at the market. And therefore, uh, I think it's in the interest of member states if this option is chosen. Uh, and may I also uh, um, um, uh, stress, this proposal concerning own resources doesn't uh, target individual European taxpayers. We are not talking about additional burdens for European taxpayers. What we propose here is, so to say, aligned to our political priorities. This is um, um, about uh, our climate goals, protecting the environment, but also being in favor of more uh, tax fairness. And uh, all these uh, proposals um, fit perfectly into our political priorities, so to say, support, steer our political priorities without harming, so to say, um, the individual European citizens and uh, taxpayers. So at the end, uh, this is uh, our goal. What we are doing is finally uh, to support, to help people, uh, to protect them, um, to promote them, uh, to support, help, assist companies, companies which finally generate and um, um, protect jobs. And uh, this is what counts in this very uh, difficult situation. I think what we have presented today is a budget, is a perspective of hope and optimism. And I'm very proud to be part of this uh, uh, team which uh, in a very comprehensive manner, almost all commissioners and their teams have contributed uh, uh, to this uh, proposal of today. And uh, I'm very much uh, convinced that uh, we can really achieve our goals. But as the President said, what counts now is uh, a quick decision, not only in the Council, but then also in the, in the Parliament. Uh, and the next challenge will be, of course, implementation, because here, we definitely have um, um, a challenge and important to recall what we are doing here on top of the so-called traditional MFF is something with, which is terminated till 2024, which uh, is addressing the current uh, uh, difficulties, the current crisis, is aiming to help recovering it, uh, and therefore everything we are proposing on top of this uh, traditional MFF is something which is not something which should last for the eternity, but specific for uh, at, uh, four years in order to achieve our goals to help uh, Europe to kickstart and to come out of this crisis even stronger than before. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner, for your great uh, introduction.